I have a, just a, a couple brief statements. Um, you know, first of all, um, working on the labor front, there's a couple of uh, developments um, that I think are um, worthy to highlight. Um, number one, I'd like to congratulate the um, uh, GBNV and the Department of Labor Affairs and Social Development, where they signed an MOU geared towards identifying um, members of our community that would enter into a training program um, run by GB with the idea of giving them the skills and training to make them eventually employable by GB. Um, in addition to that, I had uh, conversations with management from um, Rainforest Adventures, and the feedback on the job fair was very positive, that there was good turnout, and expectations are that um, almost all of the positions that they're looking to be filled, um, that they believe that they've identified people uh, locally that can fill the positions, um, with the exception perhaps of a couple of top managerial positions, understanding that their operation might be, um, some of it might be technical and specific, basically the same as operating a ski lift. Um, but uh, the expectations are that almost all of the positions will be filled locally. Um, in our conversation as well, um, I made a request that if they're bringing in trainers and they're doing uh, customer service training for their staff, obviously they're looking for somewhere between 60 to 80 positions to be filled, um, would they consider making those training opportunities available for others, even if not um, directly planned to be employees? And they said they would certainly be willing to make their training opportunities available to those, even if they're not going into the employment directly for Rainforest Adventures. And so I think that's a very positive step. I think that uh, any time that we have um, entities, and, and I, you know, like to give a congratulations as well to CSEF. You know, they've worked hard in terms of providing training opportunities. As a matter of fact, that's something that I as minister would like to see um, a stronger partnership in terms of how from the Ministry of Labor we can work together with the unions to again develop other training programs in the end making our people um, more marketable, more employable. Um, I think those are all very positive developments. Um, another topic that I'd like to touch on, um, actually since already <clears throat> last year, um, there's been quite a bit of work done on national health insurance. Um, this is something that worldwide is a trend, uh, a project that everyone recognizes as being important for every community. The World Health Organization um, defines that um, when we talk about universal health coverage, what they really are talking about is that all people in communities can use promotive, preventative, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative health services that they need of sufficient quality to be effective while also ensuring that the use of these services does not expose the user to financial hardship. So this is the technical definition when we talk about universal health coverage. But there's some terms in here that we need to, to also expound on. For example, we talk about equity and access to healthcare services, and what we're talking about is that everyone who needs service should be able to get access to them, um, not only those that can pay. The quality of healthcare services should be good enough to improve the health of those receiving the services, and people should be protected against financial risk, ensuring that the cost of the services does not put people at risk of financial harm. And these are things that all the members of our community, I don't think, have any problems to agree on. Um, as a matter of fact, the WHO in their constitution identified that um, health is a fundamental right, a fundamental human right. And again, as I've mentioned, in our discussions we've had for now oh, past year with different stakeholders, different entity groups, I think the point of departure is a point that everyone agrees on. But within the discussion, and we know that globally the discussion about um, health care, universal health coverage, is a very difficult discussion. I mean, if you look to the United States, you have the discussions going on currently about Obamacare and Trump care, 
and it's a topic that very often divides countries. The question about we should have access to health care, quality health care, is undeniable. The question becomes define quality, define access, and of course the difficult question of how do you fund it. Fact is that health care costs globally are increasing all the time, and as technologies and new medications become available, those costs for health care only continue to increase. As a matter of fact, it increases at a rate higher than the inflation rate, so you have a medical inflation rate which is actually at a higher percentage than normal economic inflation rates. So there are some very fundamental discussions, some very challenging issues um, related to national health insurance, but these are things that we believe we need to tackle in St. Martin. St. Martin is a country, of course, and as our Minister of Finance like, points out regularly, uh, we have limited financial resources. So um, structuring our health care system, structuring our health insurance system um, is a critical way of managing the quality and also the efficiency, the effectiveness, and also the costs. You know, we spend a lot of money on administrative costs. For example, SEDV manages, I think, actually five different funds under their, um, under their umbrella. So what that means is they have five different policy conditions that they need to administrate, five different um, um, financial accounting systems. So that means they're, in essence, maintaining multiple administrative um, services for the different funds um, with each with their associated costs. So if we can synchronize those funds into one uniform fund, it would obviously make operational expenses less, which means that more money would be available to spend in health care. Um, and in St. Martin, I think many of us are aware there's too many people who don't have access to affordable health insurance. There, there are issues where people, if they are um, above the SEDV limit and they have pre-existing conditions, for example, many times the insurances that they can purchase exclude pre-existing conditions. So what that means is if you come into St. Martin and you're looking to buy private insurance but you have a coronary uh, problem, ca cardiac issues, uh, diabetes, the private insurance that you can purchase very often will put caps on how much they will service or perhaps even exclude treatment. So ultimately what happens is um, when people have severe health issues, it becomes a financial burden to the government eventually. So that financial burden that the government has to absorb eventually, of course, comes back to the people in form of other taxes um, because ultimately government has to pay for those um, services. So um, we are uh, fairly far in the process. We're um, in consultation with a number of different stakeholders over the past year. Um, the conversations are difficult. They're heated conversations. Um, and it is a process, a time-consuming process. I've spent a lot of energy on this, trying to build consensus. Um, somebody pointed out and recently, and of course this is something I've learned over the past year and a half, that politics is the art of building consensus and dialogue, and that's what we've been doing. So um, while we're working on the national health insurance and trying to find um, the happy medium in terms of what's acceptable, I think it's important that the public realizes that the way things are continuing right now cannot continue. We need to structure our health care sector from all aspects. New hospital, as I've always mentioned, is just a building. We need to improve the quality of care, but we need to improve the access to care. We need to improve how we finance it. Um, as a matter of fact, it's my personal belief, you know, we are looking at currently a system where, <clears throat> um, just as it is now, um, health care is financed through premiums of the work from uh, people's salaries in addition to some form of contribution from, from government. Um, and a worldwide trend, and a trend I think St. Martin should look towards as well, is ultimately I think taxing people's salaries for health care um, isn't sustainable. I think we need to look at some form of a broader taxation. Some people um, for example, they in Aruba, they have a health tax, which is basically like a turnover tax. So it means that all the tourists, all the visitors to the island contribute financially to our health care system as well. So 
I think taking a structural approach, working towards um, providing quality health care and how we finance it um, is the right step for the country. It's something we're working on diligently and expect to be in Parliament before the end of the year um, debating it. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by saying that we have recently concluded uh, the conference of what we call the G GVO, Justitiële Vierlande Overleg, which is the, the judicial uh, consultation of the ministers of justices of the four countries within the kingdom. And uh, I must say that I'm very satisfied with how those meetings went, how those consultations went, and the topics that were discussed. I will not go too much into details as we had a press conference um, right after, but two points that I would like to to, to, to touch that are uh, very important. Um, first, let me say that the whole purpose of this consultation is when it pertains to combating cross-border criminality and um, terrorism. So all uh, 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 crimes that crosses the borders of one of our countries um, uh, is, is the topic of a conversation in there. And it requires uh, good cooperation between the countries themselves and the different entities working on those in those countries in law enforcement. Um, one of the things in the, in the age that we are living in today, you, it, it, it's almost unthinkable to try to solve a crime without having DNA um, available. Uh, but we know DNA is something that um, could be very touchy subject as it pertains also to a privacy issue. And um, most of the countries in the kingdom have legislation on privacy um, issues and privacy legislation. And um, they are not all, they were not all in sync with each other. But in order to be careful when sharing DNA profiles, on um, in trying to solve crimes, uh, we got together and see how we can put a joint regulation together that would guarantee the privacy issues of those from whom um, we are exchanging the DNA profiles. That um, was discussed yesterday, and three of the four countries were um, ready with it. You know, Curacao just went through an uh, 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 election and had a new minister, and the minister, in principle, is in agreement with um, um, the document that was on the table, but requested uh, just some more time, a few weeks, so he would be able to make sure that his um, his uh, uh, legislation, his local legislation, etc., is in place. After which, then he will be joining the other three in the in the sign-in. So, yesterday, um, Aruba, uh, the Netherlands, and Saint Martin were ready to uh, go ahead, and um, we signed off to that um, uh, document. The other part of the um, a very important point. In January, we had the last. Um, GVO uh, meeting in Aruba, and at that time on the agenda was the uh, the year plan of the RST, which is the Kingdom um, Corporation on uh, Detective Services, and I refused at that time to approve the year plan and the budget because of a passage in the year plan. And that passage in the year plan basically said that because of the sensitivity of the group TBO, which is part of the RST, that um, the information pertaining to that group would not be submitted, um, but only be submitted to the Minister of Kingdom Relations and the Minister of Justice in Holland. I, um, besides the, 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 the legal objections pertaining to that, as far as jurisdictions is, are concerned, I took serious offense um, to that passage because it would imply that um, we and de facto the Minister of Justice of, of, of Somalia cannot be trusted um, with that information. So at that time we refused um, to sign 
the document. Uh, in February sometime, we send an official letter to the uh, colleagues, ministers of justices, with the reasons why we did not approve it. Aruba and Curaçao had already uh, uh, agreed uh, to it, but what, one of the things that we also have to realize that not all of the things that are discussed there e apply equally to the different countries. For instance, the consensus laws, for instance, do not apply to Aruba. And, and some, some, some of the things uh, that we're talking about are different um, in the countries. So, uh, Sir Martin refused and indicated that we would not do it and gave um, the, uh, the reasons why. In May, while um, on a business trip in Holland, I also met with um, Minister Block uh, of Justice of Holland, and we further discussed and elaborated on that point because it would come back on the agenda for this JVO. Um, Aruba, in the meantime, had supported, although they approved it, they then indicated by letter that they support the position of St. Martin as far as um, the, 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 the passage and the formal uh, uh, authority line that, that is there. We, we know our RST on St. Martin as the body, as the, as the instance, and, and, and um, there's cooperation with the RST, and as far as I know, those cooperations are going pretty good. So we, we, the, the problem is not the RST. The problem is that within the RST, a body was created that has no legal basis and was taken out of the authority line by which nor the chief of police nor um, the minister responsible for justice had any knowledge of what, what was going on. And that is what we have been um, protesting about. Uh, the Minister of Justice answered, um, of Holland answered my letter and indicated that for January 2018, um, uh, we would be willing to, uh, uh, or they would uh, have the, 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 the TBO as RST regular with a regular command line as the, as the RST. Um, and, and therefore hope that I would be able to sign um, the document. Um, we indicated, no, we have a problem with that. That did not solve the problem. We were not talking about something as of 2018. And then for two reasons. If we um, mentioned in 2018, we are then assuming that uh, uh, St. Martin aut automatically would continue what, is, what was a project, which was a, um, a, a TBO project, which was uh, for 24 months and, um, and then to be evaluated. Um, so we said, no, we are not talking about that. And furthermore, the year plan, the passage in the year plan is still there. That, <laughs> that was what we protested to um, in the end. And um, eventually, uh, in the discussions, it was agreed that that passage was eliminated from the year plan, it was taken out from the year plan, that the TBO is um, the same uh, uh, authority line as the RST, so there is no separate body. But hey, uh, that doesn't take away the name T TBO, because just like in the police force, for instance, you have the A team, um, we have a cooperation, we have the Alpha team on the airport, but the authorities of those, the A team is KPSM. You know, it's not like, uh, uh, so, so within the RST, you, are, you can have the TBO, the MBO, whatever, that, that's all right, but it is RST with the same command line. We are not going to create another body with superpowers that reports to nobody. And that was, um, we were able to discuss that during the CAVO. The year plan was adapted, not corrected or anything. It was, the, the whole passage was totally eliminated from the year plan, which made it possible for us to go along with the year plan. There was a request from uh, Aruba um, on the table, which was supported by um, St. Martin and Curaçao, to have an evaluation of the RST. You know, the RST has been working here since 2001 or something like that. It's a protocol RST. And um, the ministers made it clear that by asking for an uh, evaluation, that we were not de facto saying that the RST is wrong or bad, or we, that we don't want the RST. But if you have um, uh, uh, the S, it is the Recherche Salmon Working Team, the S, Salmon Working, 
cooperation. It's the RST, again, just like some of the, uh, sometimes I'm afraid to mention the name, but some like those other teams, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just people working together in a team. So like the AFPAC team, it is people, different people you put together to work together to execute the existing laws. The RST, the S stands for cooperation. And I think that after such a long period of time of operating, and from what, again, what we said, um, positive cooperation, positive um, results, we would like to evaluate and see how, among others, that cooperation has been. And if, there's, if we can conclude and say it, is, it has been fantastic, we can uh, come to the conclusion that we need to improve on it, et cetera, et cetera. But we feel that it should be um, um, evaluated. Uh, one of the conditions, one of the, 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 the fears were that if, you know, uh, we say we're going to evaluate something, then we, we stop it and take years before we continue, and we are sure that that is absolutely not the intention. Intention is not to stop anything, or the intention is to evaluate. And um, to that end, a uh, work group consisting of um, different um, uh, players from the islands, um, um, including the two um, attorney generals, one from Aruba and one from the other um, countries in the kingdom, would hold membership. St. Martin, on that, uh, committee would be uh, represented by the uh, chief of police, by the corp chef, and um, they would get together. They would uh, determine the, the framework within which that evaluation would have to take place and then report back to the different um, ministers for us to put the process um, into play. All in all, I think uh, a very, very um, important um, decision that was taken and it was we were able to take those decisions um, by sitting together mutual respect making the case why we want to do something and um, um, eventually agreeing to how we would go uh, about it another another uh, uh, thing that the chiefs of police um, in their came up with a plan, had to make a plan where we would uh, also cooperate on the development of uh, uh, strategic management. So the, 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 the top uh, of the corps um, with training, and this we were doing in cooperation with the, um, with the other countries, and especially the police academy in, um, in the Netherlands. Um, the chief of police will be meeting on this topic in August in Bonaire to finalize um, the final plan and then report back to us. So uh, training is a very important element. Um, we do not want a situation, right now we have like the RST, the Khmer, and, and uh, they are all assisting in areas which are not always their core areas, um, but they are assisting our police force. And the whole idea of that assistance is while we are we have the assistance available to do what we need to do, but that we also develop our own. And at times I believe not enough emphasis is put on that training and development part. So you don't want a situation that if tomorrow um, Holland took a decision and says, let's um, matter should say come back home, that all of a sudden our um, law enforcement ability would, uh, would diminish tremendously. So we have to make use of the situation that we have this assistance right now for two things. One, to cooperate and cooperate good with each other. And part of the training is by involving our own in the process and not keeping them out and others doing it for us. We have to do it together so that we will also learn how we need to do it and the, 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 the formal training because that is the way we will develop our own. Uh, I've got three items that I'd like to share with you. One, I'm pleased to see the number of calls that are coming in and questions that are coming in relative to the law school. The law school, we got the final report from the committee quite recently, and the option was to start for September, and I choose that we should start the law school in September, and steps are being taken 
to be able to make that possible as of now. There is right now no central location you can call to get all of the information that is pertinent to register with the law school. Announcements will be made once that is completed uh, so that everybody can get the information they want. But uh, again, uh, look out for it, it's coming. Uh, it was a little unfortunate that this time of the year, which is the vacation time of the year, where most people are on vacation, that we're trying to get this together. Uh, so it's more difficult to get people, to get things coordinated. But we are working hard to start this year in September. The importance of the law school, I don't have to reiterate that. Um, if we look around us and we see who have the high positions, I like to call it, in the judicial system and what have you. The reason for that is that we don't have a pool to generate people of our own to take those positions. So those positions have to be taken by people from the outside. We have an obligation to ourselves to change that. Historically, education has been denied certain people so that there is no upward mobility. That upward mobility is going to come if we provide that education and fund it. Somebody is not going to do it for us. So this opportunity with law school is one that we have a duty and an obligation to take advantage of to make sure that we can get the upward mobility that is so badly needed in our society. Uh, moving on, I'd like to also share with you that uh, steps have been taken. I've been to Curacao last week again. Uh, I came back with another eight million guilders. Uh, that eight million guilders, just to explain to you, is from the um, Development Foundation, which was treated separately from the general um, uh, division of assets. Uh, an advance has been paid out now to St. Martin on what was there. There's about six million guilders left, but we have eight million that came in uh, last week.